Hi Jacqueline. Hi Heidi. And hello everybody else that's just joined. Um I'm just going to find Kim. Um How's it going over there? Can you hear me clearly? I can hear you. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, everything looks great. Cool. Okay, there's Kim. Oh, there we go. Hello Kim. I'm just waiting for Kim. Oh, well, there's Kim. Hi Kim. Hello Kim. Hey guys. Hey. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? Sorry, yeah. were you waiting a while? <laughs> no. No, I just I lost time for a sec there. It's fine. I just um I just I just opened it up now. Okay, great. And I see lots of people are joining already, which is cool. I just thought we, it would be good to open it up a few minutes earlier so that we could say hi and then give people a chance to 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 come, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and my yeah, I see we already have a few viewers. Okay. Hey? I I see we already have a few viewers, so it's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> it is cool. Yes, and my kids uh, have just departed. So that's good. <laughs> I'm very glad we did the test run yesterday. Um because uh yeah, you know, apologies to everybody who saw the streaking naked children and dogs running around in the background. <laughs> we managed to avoid that this time, hopefully. Yeah, that's life though, hey? That is life. Screaming is kids life. and 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 dogs. <laughs> yes, and just stuff that happens yeah. when you're live on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. It always when you're live. Yeah. It won't happen any other time. other than when you go live <laughs> suddenly everybody strips all their clothes off extra so, entertainment <laughs> yeah it's a bit of added added vuma cool. it seems like we've sorted out all the technical problems and um things seem to be running smooth <laughs> yes holding fingers that it stays that way i'm back in joburg now so my connection at least will be stable So well, where were you before, Jacqueline? Uh we were in the Midlands um with family. We okay, go nice. we have to go down there for like a quarterly reset. Um otherwise we lose mm. our marbles. Living in Joburg requires an escape mechanism. <laughs> or we do at least. Yeah. Um so that's our escape um onto the farm in the Midlands. It's very it's very peaceful. You can't imagine it means it's I can imagine, yeah. Yeah. It's it looks real. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's very beautiful. It's um yeah it's a real necessary. It's actually I was thinking about it Heidi especially because of your how your work um this body particularly speaks so much about um well I mean all your work is always is sort of drawing on that natural environment but this one also speaking about how hard how hard it has been or and was to be disconnected from that. Yeah. And we have explored the Mid- Midlands not that much but um only slightly there's so many waterfalls <laughs> just um waterfalls everywhere and <laughs> just yeah. green and lush <laughs> yeah but the fact that you found all that life in khateng just by like dipping down into the grasses i found uh, very hopeful yeah um not all the pictures were necessarily taken in khateng um <laughs> so yeah there was a bit of a um a crossover i don't know a, a, <laughs> yeah it's it's but most most of them were based on hunting grasslands but also um experiences that we've had when we could finally explore further again <laughs> yeah because some of the paintings were quite were done sort of spur of the moment <laughs> yeah okay cool well it's six o'clock now so i'm thinking that it's a good time to formally start and say hello to everybody thank you for joining us um i'm jacqueline and there's heidi and kim and we are going to be talking today mostly about um heidi transitioning and moving between painting and print making um in her practice uh which for me is one of my favorite subjects having been exposed to a print workshop for so long um that process for me is absolutely fascinating the way that the, the way that that collaboration can open things up and how the media talk to each other in the end and if if anybody who's viewing hasn't seen Heidi's show please do 
go and have a look at it at Debacrit Projects um, on Jan Smuts Avenue. It is beautiful. It's very beautiful and it's beautifully resolved within the works. And uh, it's been wonderfully hung. It's, it's been installed in a way that really amplifies the resolution between the prints and the paintings. So I think it's up until the 17th, did you say, Kim? Yeah, it's up so, until the 17th. So you still have a full week. Yeah, and then on Saturday yeah. there will be an event, which is the final closing walkabout, which should be good. And also um, a launch for a book um, that has been published for this show and also to mark the collaboration uh, with Heidi um, over the last few years, which brings me to how I'd really like to set the tone, which is to get a sense <laughs> from both Heidi and from Kim about the trajectory of your involvement with each other and also with this organization that sort of made, made this collaboration possible. So Heidi, maybe you want to begin. Yeah, I've, I've just started, I actually have a long ongoing relationship with David Projects. Um, I started, I initially met them through having carved linos and, um, and then there was a gap and then they invited me to do a series of watercolor monotypes, which was my first experience with watercolor monotypes. I think that was probably in 2015 or 17. Um, I've sort of lost my sense of time and, <laughs> um, so I did a smallish series of watercolor monotypes. I've only, at that point, I've only had experiences, experience with oil-based monotypes. And um, those of you who are familiar with monotypes, the two are quite different. Um, and so that was a big learning curve. And then there was a gap. And they invited me to do another series of watercolor monotypes. Um, <laughs> and going bigger, using bigger plates, and sort of exploring different ways of applying the medium onto the plate, and which also sort of opened up the possibility for etchings, and it's not something that I really saw myself getting into, um, but um, Jill and Kim and, um, yeah, they showed me that, because I always thought about, yeah, I don't know if you want to go into the technical technicality of etching right now but um i think we'll probably get to, me... to that later yeah so they showed me possibilities of etching that are more painterly and um a way that my paint can be almost um applied or adapted to the medium of etching and sort of opened up in my mind <laughs> uh the possibility of, of doing etchings um and yeah etching was became so much more than i thought it could be and um yeah we're still in the development we're still um sort of developing my etching language or <laughs> exploring different um etching processes and i think it's still very much in the in the in, in its infancy <laughs> um our explore, exploration of etching together um yeah, so that's basically the gist of it. Cool. And Kim, I really am interested also from your perspective, how your, because the beauty, the beauty of print is that it is, it's the meeting of, of a technician and an artist yeah. in an environment that's conducive to making this work. So I'm yeah. quite interested to know from your perspective also how, what has been your experience um, at David Crit Workshop, but also now in this project with Heidi um, as the, as the, as the, the main printer on this project? Yeah, well, um, I started at David Cook Workshop in 2013, um, which is not, I believe it was the same year that I actually became acquainted with Heidi. I think it was 2013, Heidi, that you helped us with the, with the carving of one of our projects. Um, so it'll be uh, eight years in June that I've been at David Cook Workshop, um, working with, with different artists. Um, I met Heidi, obviously, because of the, the carving project that we had. But um, when we were kind of, when I was learning how to print watercolor monotypes, um, Heidi was kind of one of the first artists that we had, we thought of when we were thinking about, like, who could we actually do some watercolor monotypes with, whose work really is suited to this medium. And Heidi's name kind of immediately popped up because her 
her paintings are very much like you know the the washes of a of a watercolor you know that the translucency and and those be- the the beautiful way that the light shines through them and that sort of thing so we invited Heidi in in 2017 to do a small series of um of watercolor monotypes and i worked with her to kind of print those and um it was a small series but uh, because we got uh, such good feedback from our audience and her audience on those we invited her back again um to do a few more i think it was at i think it was in 2019 or beginning i think it was in 2019 we've worked so, we've worked with Heidi so much i actually get lost in the years that she's <laughs> that she's been working with us um and then it was just kind of a natural transition for her to um explore her mark making a bit more through through the etchings and through the dry points and to kind of explore a different side to to how she creates things and the that was uh something that exciting for all of us to kind of um move into something different from the watercolors which we i think we had kind of fully explored so now we wanted to kind of move into something that we could it was like new territory that we could move into and then kind of now have something new to explore with the etchings yeah so i'm quite interested then to know um from both of you because your answers will come from a different angle um Heidi I, as a painter i mean paint, painting by nature is something that happens in your studio and you're on your own and you are the person who decides when the marks are finished when they are the way that you want them to be in order to show them to somebody else nobody sees them until you are ready um in a workshop environment that's a completely different it's a completely different scenario because you are vulnerable in a way that you aren't in your own studio because you you're doing things most of the time artists are doing things in a workshop that they wouldn't normally do in their studios they're using techniques and 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 um materials that they are being supported by a technician in order to create marks that they want so there's that that happens which the vulnerability of being in a workshop i think is always quite an interesting um perspective I, i'm always interested in what the artist's experience of that is um but also the sense that when you see that print being pulled off the press it's unpredictable what marks are going to be achieved and you are seeing them for the first time as everybody else and there's something about that also that's um that requires quite a bit of courage i think but then from kim's perspective as the supporter of this process it requires a lot of um sensitivity so i'm really interested um heidi in your experience of being in the workshop um as a painter was the transition to print making what was your experience and from kim's perspective how how did it feel to support that process yeah it it was quite a uh an adjustment to go from you know being quite uh, relatively isolated in the studio and you know having to make all the decisions myself um apart from you know asking input here and there um it's much more collaborative and much more um constantly with other people analyzing the image throughout the process and with each step and as you said you know the moment when it comes off the press sometimes you know um your reaction is very immediate and um yeah it's everyone everyone is sort of always has the typical expressions you know ooh or, <laughs> or mm. <laughs> you know sometimes it comes out very differently from how we all expected it to come out and then we sort of brainstorm and problem solve and um sort of oh, why did it do this sometimes it's very in a um sort of inexplicable why it did this thing and <laughs> well sometimes i did it you know it, it a lot of the processes are quite are sort of backwards um it's you know you know there's a some of them you have to sort of do in reverse where something that on the plate is light comes out on the paper that dark and at the beginning it was quite um a challenge to always make that flip in my mind so I, things would come out um you know as a inverse of <laughs> what i intended and then it it sometimes worked it sometimes didn't so um yeah it's very as you said it's it's it there's definitely a, an element of vulnerability um which is also present in painting but i think a different kind of vulnerability it's much more um you know public in the 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 
the painting studio, you know, it's very just myself and um, I can cry, no one will know. <laughs> so it is, um, it is in that sense, you know, you are quite open to critique. So there's, a, I, I think sometimes there's a fear of messing up, which um, isn't always there with painting because I can mess up and no one will know. But I think that opens up possibilities for, um, I don't know, maybe there's a, a pressure that can be useful <laughs> in like making the right decisions because there's, you know, there's, it's a lot of decision making, print making. It's a lot of, um, and the decisions get made in a different order than with painting where it's, um, you know, you decide on the color palette when you start, but with etching, you start with the image and then at the end comes the color decisions. And it's a very sort of democratic and involved process, which is, um, I think it challenges me to sort of sometimes get out of my habits that I don't necessarily always or sort of um, bypass certain blind spots that I have or habits that I go into or, <laughs> you know, it's sort of, it, it places a mirror <laughs> um, and sometimes, you know, they, they point out things that I, I didn't think about or wouldn't have noticed. So in that sense, it's very valuable to have that, you know, to every now and then do a collaborative project like this that sort of reveals things to myself that I wouldn't have, yeah, that it would have never been revealed otherwise. And I mean, in terms of that, um, that vulnerability, Kim, and, and the decision making processes that, uh, Kim, you will have, you, you will have guided, guided all of that. Um, yeah. How, did, how was that? It's always so interesting to me because um, almost every artist that I've spoken to always says that before they come into the workshop, they have this kind of anxiety or apprehension or a little bit of fear coming into the space to collaborate because they feel like all of their mistakes are seen or their, you know, their their ideas are scrutinized but for me I always feel like um, you you come into a space where like in the workshop you you have like a, this uh, team of cheerleaders kind of behind you <laughs> that you while you're creating work you have this team that is so invested in like creating this artwork and that are so on board to um, bring your ideas to life so I think over like when the, the apprehension is, is there in the beginning, but as soon as an artist comes, comes in, they kind of relax into this idea that I have this team of people behind me that are, are really here to kind of, you know, get this idea onto paper and to help me through all the weird technical things that I don't understand. And, and that's what is, that's essentially what, what the technicians are there to do is like, we, we work out the kinks so that the artist can just be the artist and that they, they can play and try different things and we kind of take care of the, the nitty gritty so that they don't have to, so that apprehension and that fear can kind of take a back seat and they can kind of do what they're, what they do in, essentially in their, in, this, in their studios is just create and be free to create. And, and um, along the way, they usually learn that mistakes are great and we love them because it often like it often um, pushes the project further than than it would have if we if we hadn't made those mistakes. Julian Ross, our master printer, always says like the happy the happy accidents. You know, something that essentially like for artists is always bad. You know, mistakes is actually for us it's really great because it really it gets it gets you to think of things in a different way and develop something that otherwise wouldn't have developed. You know, if you if you hadn't if you hadn't made the mistake. So we're, we're there for, as, to be the cheerleaders and to help and to, and to work it out so that you don't have to. Okay. Yeah, it definitely feels like a team of cheerleaders, as you said, and, <laughs> and it is very encouraging to have that environment where so many people are invested in what I do and, um, you know, invested in the, in the artwork. It feels, um, yeah, it's very encouraging. <laughs> But instead of pom poms, they've got mad skills. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mad skills. Useful. Yeah, and and there's definitely a lot of oohs and ahs that happen every time something comes off the press. So we're always like, that's our little cheer every time. Ooh, ah, oh, it looks great. So ooh, maybe not so great, but we'll work it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm also really interested, especially, and, and also in terms of the supportive relationship between artist print workshop in that environment. For you, Heidi, uh, in terms of moving from expanding your practice from painting into, into these other media, first monotype, two different kinds of monotype, and then into etching and different kinds of etching within that. What, um, <clears throat> how, how have the elements of your painting come into the prints? And also then the inverse, how has being in the workshop influenced your painting in that kind of call and response way, which I felt very strongly in the show. Um, I'm, I'm interested to know your perspective on that. Yeah, I think the two um, sort of processes definitely feed into each other immensely, sometimes not even more than I notice. I think my painting has um, changed dramatically when I started doing monotypes because it, um, especially with oil-based monotypes that I did before I did um, water-based monotypes, you have a limited time frame in which you have to finish the plate. So that was the first time I really had to um, paint quicker and, and paint more dynamically and spontaneously, which and sort of forced me to stop at a certain point because with the paintings, I tended, I tended to fiddle with the painting um, for very long and never really feel finished. And um, with the print, it's sort of like when it's done, it's done and you make the decision and you, and you print it. And um, it, I think it brought about a spontaneity in my work and it also opened me up for the, to the possibility of um, working with smooth surfaces as opposed to absorbent surfaces. Mm. Um, and I particularly enjoy working with liquids on smooth surfaces because it's very malleable. It still moves on the surface. So I, I employed that in my painting practice and um, that really shaped the way I paint. Mm -hmm. And I think it also works the other way around. I think, um, you know, I always thought of etching as sort of a drawing medium, a line-based medium. And, I, and, you know, you, you typically see etchings, um, you know, there are aquatints and then lines. So I thought, you know, I, I didn't really consider etching that strongly because I, I thought of myself as a painter, not a, not a, uh, a drawer, which is, you know, not uh, useful, you know, we don't necessarily even have to make that distinction, but um, I had a bit of a fear of lines, <laughs> and um, they showed me that it doesn't always have to, you don't even necessarily need to use lines, you can use um, color fields, you can create paint, very painterly marks with sugar lift and um, brush strokes, and, you know, you can, this is how you can use different colors and, and, and um, you know, this is how you can apply color, multiple colors, and you know, only you can build up build up whole image, you know, with brush strokes and spit bite, which is very painterly. I feel, and I also sort of actually enjoy the line element <laughs> more than I thought. Um, and I think I also ended up using more line in my painting. So I, 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 I guess I worked a little bit through my fear of lines, um, which I'm still. Uh, working through, I guess, um, and also the some sometimes having to decide: do you start with lines or do you start with color fields? And um, yeah, just the, the relationship between line-based work and you know liquid, you know, sort of filling in fields. I think I don't know if that answers your question, but um, yeah, it definitely it it is definitely feeds into each other so much, and I think. I think a good way to sort of, if you get stuck in your sort of medium and, and you feel like you you have explored everything you can, I think a good way, something that always, you know, boosts my, my practice is to explore another, another medium, which, um, yeah, which then makes you think a little bit differently about your main medium. Um, mm -hmm. Not that you need to have a main me medium, but um, yeah, you learn, that's, I think, that's how, you know, those new connections get made formed, um, is through exploring um, different, yeah, you know, different processes. Hmm. And I think also as a, <clears throat> as a supported experimental space, it's also incredibly valuable. I mean, Rauschenberg is a great example of an artist who will, you know, the, the people who collect Rauschenberg will collect the prints sometime, often before they collect the paintings. They want their hands on the prints first because they know, have, you know, as collectors, as invested in his career, that whatever he's doing in the print workshop in that experimental space is going to feed 
is going to feed the next body of work, is going mm -hmm. to be visible in one way or another, whether it be uh, content, but most often in terms of mark making and, and uh, um, how to approach a concept from a different perspective in the other media later on. Um, so it's a very valuable and an incredibly generative space, I think. Um, so I'm glad that you, it's such a lovely thing to hear how each artist experiences that. Um, and I mean, as, of course, from Kim, from your perspective, it's, it's a, I mean, it's a, it must be a constant challenge to navigate um, and have sensitivity. You know, you have, you have to constantly combine very technical knowledge with a sensitivity to mark and a sensitivity mm -hmm. to how that medium is going to translate in terms of the work, not just how it's going to look, but how it feels. Um, mm -hmm. Well, luckily we work, I think artists uh, have a natural knack of kind of, I'm, I'm just thinking of how when Heidi came in, she, um, she almost uh, immediately started creating marks in a way that an, a painter would and using techniques that, uh, uh, like that is more suited to someone who's a painter. And, um, because I think artists have this this beautiful way of kind of when they come into the space, they they make it work for them. So like when you're talking about like being sensitive to the to the marks that are made and and the way in which they work, they you kind of go with their flow because most of the time artists know what they want to do. They just need someone to kind of guide them through doing it. But um, I think spending an artist spending a lot of time um, in their studio kind of working through ideas kind of gives them that natural confidence to, to just go with it. And that's, that's essentially what usually happens when they, when they come into the workshop, we we we're, we're there to guide, but they, they kind of, um, they mold, they kind of take on the techniques and, and make it work for them. And then we, we go with their flow and guide where we need to and make decisions where we need to, but we're, we're essentially following their creative energy mm. and, you know, make it like make, they make it work for them. And then we fall in line with that and then make adjustments as we go while maintaining kind of like the, the quality, obviously, because printmaking is so technical. There's a level of quality that, that comes into making the work, but the, the artists know what they're doing because they, they do it in their, in, their, in their studios all the time. They know, they know how to work through problems and they're very open to um, kind of changing direction when things don't quite work out because that's the kind of problem solving that they're already doing in their mm -hmm. own practice. So it's, it's so beautiful. That's why it's such a beautiful meeting of minds. It's because artists know what they want to do and how they want to do it and technicians know how to bring that about. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, th I think that's why it works so well is because um, uh, even when artists are, 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 paint, are, are creating their work, it is technical in its own way. So if you have a technician that's kind of covering the technical side, they can kind of cover the artistic side. And that's, it creates this beautiful like, like sy symbiotic relationship when you're working, working in the workshop. Does that answer your question? <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> Very much so. Thank you, Kim. Um, also, I mean, aside from these benefits of printmaking that we've already discussed now, I'm really interested also in, from your perspective, Heidi, to know what, um, what you see as the long-term benefits for you as a, as a, as a practitioner of, of engaging in this medium. Is it something that you're wanting to do more of in the future? And, and why, if so, what, what for you is what uh, makes it sing? Yeah, it's definitely something I want to continue. I feel like um, I've only brushed the surface of um, printmaking. And, um, yeah, there's so many techniques that I still want to explore. And, um, yeah, I think I was I was actually thinking about the relationship between painting and, and, and etching um, today when I was just um, thinking about artists who... I think that a lot of painters throughout history also had a printmaking practice and I'm not exactly sure why, why it, it, those two things appeal to some people. But I think there, there are so many overlaps and um, 
and it's a way you can almost consider color decisions and things um, away from the you know the problem you can it's almost a way to step in and out of um, you know you can you can explore color after as I said after the image so it's a way of, of generating images that is a bit um, a bit different and also with the collaborate collaborative aspect you know it's a way of, of achieving images that wouldn't have otherwise been achieved and um, that's what yeah that's what I enjoy about having you know these separate um, or not separate but practices that you can sort of um, you can step out of the one you can step out of the one studio and into the other stu into the, the the workshop and sort of have a fresh perspective on things and um, and and just consider other possibilities to achieve um, you know the images that you envision hmm. I think and, also yeah, I think it's um, yeah, and the, the the fact that it that it is additioned and it it is um, uh, multi that you can create multiples is also for me a very valuable aspect of it um, because yeah for various reasons which I'm sure we're going to get into but um, yeah it's almost like you can invest a lot of time into a small image and um, you can instead of just having the one that's going to be in one place you can have it at you can almost have it um, live six separate lives <laughs> and um exactly you know. <laughs> yeah that is, that yeah. is one of the great beauties of of multiples and pub publishing in general i guess is that whereas a whereas a unique work even the monotypes and the paintings they you know they go they get seen in a show but once they once they enter into a private collection they don't get seen again except by the eyes that have purchased them um whereas with multiples there's this this real um, opportunity to expose a larger audience to the work and also expose the work to a larger audience, which is, which is hugely beneficial. Um, and it makes me think also of the book, um, because it is such a special book. I mean, you know, it's, it's quite, it's got all its very specific elements aside from the work from the, 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 the artwork that's in it. It's been specifically designed, specifically written for, specifically bound. It's a, it's another element of collaboration that also now as a limited edition, will have another life. Um, so you've got now the life of the painting and the unique work, the life of the multiple that enters into various arenas, and then the life of the book, the, you know, the, the book publishing project, which, is, it, which has also got its own audience. And so in that way, you really are creating a very uh, lo solid base um, for developing your career further, which is, which is quite lovely. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, it's a huge privilege and um, I'm excited about the book because I think we're so used to, because um, you might ask, you know, why, you know, you have multiples, but we have the internet, we can see an infinite, you know, you can replicate something in an infinite amount of times and it can be seen by an infinite amount of eyes, but mm. I think it's good to have that physicality, you know, the physical printed image, whether it's a digital, pr digitally printed as, as a book or, um, you know, as a, as a, a multiple itching. Um, I think it's good to have that physical object that sort of demands a longer gaze and um, mm -hmm. a deeper interaction than, you know, just our, because I've, I think we've become so used to screens and seeing um, a lot of things. It's, it's almost, it loses its intensity sometimes. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be able to offer a, a book that can be, you know, that you can sit with and um, page through. Mm. Well, it's, yeah. the, it's also it's the smell of the paper and the, the texture mm. under your fingers. The feel of the paper, the paper yeah. The, the smell of, it's the smell of the, the inks and that, that carries through in the work as well. I mean, Kim, you spend all your time in the workshop. You, you know that, you know. <laughs> it's, yeah, a very it's a great smell. smell. <laughs> it is a great smell. <laughs> it's a great feeling as well. It's that, it's that, that, that wonderful mystery in the mm. collective project, you know, which I think I agree with you, Heidi, with, with so many screens and, and also so many, um, so much demand for our attention. It is, it is a really mm. wonderful thing to sit quietly with an object, whether it's a printer or a painting or a book and just engage with that. 
um, for a time and not be interrupted by something else popping onto the screen or switching to another app and going down another rabbit hole. It's a, it's a really special thing. Yeah, that's, that's and, really um, great. I think. Your... Sorry, no, Sorry Heidi. I wanted to say, and even from like my perspective, and like uh, I was there when they were made, but even now, when I look at them, I always see. I feel like I always see something new in them. Like each time that I see them, or I sit with them, or I even if I if I um, happen to be in the gallery and get to see them there's always something that takes me by surprise that I didn't maybe notice before or that reveals itself to me. And it's exactly that thing of being able to sit with something and really digest it in a different way that makes it so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I think um, Kim will attest to this, but um, in the workshop, sometimes I a bit of sun comes in through the window and I put the, the text prints sort of there and photograph them from the side because etchings sort of have as well, um, you know, any, um, you know, etchings sort of have this three, three dimensionality with the embossing that occurs when you, um, when you print it, that, um, you know, it doesn't really come across when it's, um, reproduced digitally. Um, mm -hmm especially when this when light falls on it from the side you can see um you can see the lines have that three-dimensional quality and um yeah that, I lo that's exciting for me <laughs> yeah and um it's that very um it's that massive pressure which in itself is so capricious you know you never know what it's going to do but it does do that it, it lifts everything um <laughs> And it's also the reason for choosing to frame a thing, to float, a, to float a, a print in a frame, is that you get that that's, that um, experience of it being an object. It's not, it's not flat. It's not possible for it to be flat, even though it's two dimensional. Yeah. There are grooves. There's a whole landscape in 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 each individual plate, and there's a whole other mm -hmm. landscape in the way that that plate translates onto the paper. And I suppose that's your whole realm, Kim, is working out. Work, working out the resonance between the plate and the paper and the ink, the color of the ink, um, the viscosity. There's so many different elements that go into making that, um, making that landscape that you talk about. Um, so yeah, it does, it makes a big, it, you, you got to see it in real life. Otherwise it, you're not really seeing it. Sorry guys, you broke up there for a sec. Will you repeat that Jacqueline? Yes. I lost did you lose us? Um, I Continue. <laughs> I, I was saying, um, I was talking about the, the landscape of the plate and how mm. even, though, even though a print is a two-dimensional uh, artwork, it's, it's not, it's it can actually, never be two-dimensional because you've got yes. the landscape that is created on the plate as the acid bites into the copper, creates those grooves and dips and valleys and highs and lows. The ink sits in there and it comes up in the paper because of that immense mm. pressure. And that is where you, that's your realm, I guess, is, is creating the resonance between those two, the, the lands, one landscape that's going to create the other landscape. Um, so that, that, that thing can be experienced as an object. Yeah. It actually ends up being quite, um, if you think of a print, actually quite sculptural, uh, maybe mm. on a, on a much kind of smaller, smaller level but like if you like if you take the time to really look at a print you can kind of like you like you're saying you can kind of really see those grooves in the way that the pressure pushes the paper into those marks and it like it does become its own little landscape its own little sculpture slash landscape so it's like this weird it's like this weird animal that you can't quite put your you can't quite describe you can't quite like place in a box and that's what makes print so beautiful is 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 exactly that, that they're not just these flat reproductions. They're actually like little mini artworks, uh, objects in themselves. So it's almost like a geological process is happening on the surface. And um, you know, they would often, when they explain certain, you know, effects um, to me, they would draw cross section of the plate. So it's almost like a sculpture a sculptural process, you know, you're, you're changing the shape of the plate. You're not, um, you know, just creating lines. You're sort of um, altering the, the shape of it. <laughs> mm. 
And you know, I, I when I was looking, when I was engaging with your show, which has got them both now the paintings and the prints, um, I kind of felt that way also about these paintings that are not on canvas. It's not, it, like you said, it's not an absorbent surface. So with an absorbent surface, you'd need, in order to create that kind of geological effect, you'd have to use quite thick, impasto paint in order to make it ra raise itself up like that whereas that you, you know the, the paint the, the the way that you're painting with with such luminous um it's a, there's a luminosity to the paint because it's it's thinned out it's washed down but then because the surface is not not absorbing all of that it's sitting on top in this beautiful way that there's there's this beautiful resonance between that um, these washes sitting on top of this board and then the, the ink sitting on top of the paper. I, f I found that to be very beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do sort of, I see my painting also as a sort of a geological process because I tend to like, I create like a flat color and then I would, you know, just paint with a line of turpentine and that would sort of push the paint away. So it's like, um, it's almost like a river that forms in the paint and mm. it's not very three-dimensional necessarily but it is it is three-dimensional in a very um uh, you know the height it's it, it's it's subtly three-dimensional mm. but it's very it's very flat really but the um you can sort of see a, an outline forming mm. around a mark that mm. does give it a three-dimensional quality but i think it's quite similar in terms of you know, you don't create a line by just um, applying a line of pigment. It's um, creating a line by carving things out or, you know, pushing things to the side or um, hmm. removing something, sometimes hmm. adding something. And, um, yeah, the, the, those lines interact in, in, in more interesting ways than perhaps if you were just, if you were just to, you know, apply a line of, of pigment mm. that makes sense <laughs> yes it does it does i am um, i also wanted to know now that you guys have gone through this experience together at this moment in time do you have questions for each other i mean what 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 questions would you ask each other now if you you know um now that you've been through this experience and the show is up and the body of work is in the world um what do you have any comments or, or reflections for each other in terms of the relationship that is uh, that you know has made this possible that's a hard question i know i'm sorry i'm putting you both on the spot <laughs> no i well can i go <laughs> yes mm. um I like I um sometimes when we when I work with artists I don't always get a chance to actually ask them um whether they like for you Heidi has printmaking since you've been in the workshop you've now done the the series of of etchings and you've also done the watercolor monotypes have you found now that you're going back into your paintings that it's influenced the way you paint or the way you create your paintings or your approach to your paintings? Like, do you, the, ha, have you found that, that printmaking in any way has like influenced how you paint or just your process in general? So I missed, um, could you just maybe summarize the question? Cause I missed bits of it. Um, it was just can breaking you, into a bit there. Can you but hear me now? I got the most of it. Yeah, just just has it affected yeah. your your painting, the way you paint, or your practice, or your your just your the way you think about your your paintings, be, like before you even start them. Like what what kind of uh, influence has printmaking had on the way on the way you paint? Yeah, I think with etching, the difference for me with painting and etching before I start is like um, with painting I can almost just make a start of painting on a whim and I can just jump in and do it but with etching I have to sort of really consider what I want to um, paint or draw etch you know I have to it's I feel it's more of a commitment it's more it's more of an intentional decision that I, I sort of I sort of so I, I think I spend a bit more time on, on sort of um, deciding what image I'm going to do and 
whereas painting is more very it's very very intuitive and very sort of spur of the moment but um yeah etchings i sort of have to really i really have to sort of sit and think what is it that i want to um portray or what is it what is the what is do i really believe in this image um yeah so there's a there's more of a a commitment to the image i i feel which is a powerful thing um yeah <laughs> if that makes things you know if it answers your answers your question but um yeah it really it 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 sort of forces me to stop and think about why it is that i do what i do and um um you know what gives uh, an image that sort of importance or gravitas you know <laughs> um as opposed to just a snapshot where, which sometimes i mean i do especially um that also comes with size like if i do a large painting we'll just sort of ponder on it for longer um or it takes a, a higher level of commitment anything that takes time takes a a stronger almost belief in it or it you know there's a greater yeah you know, there's you need to you need to sort of believe in the image <laughs> and i think with with etching even if it's a small thing you know i have to i have to really um think about images and and consider their importance cool yeah and um i guess i uh yeah there's many things that i can ask you <laughs> um but I, i would like to know which processes um because it seems like you know as as brett was saying it seems like you love what you do and you know you don't seem to get bored of you know <laughs> um doing all these um applying or carrying out all these technical processes and you know working with the plates and the artists so i want to know like which what part of the process is your favorite and maybe which etching technique is do you particularly like to um help artists with like what is your like if you like cuz you 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 sort of give me a plate and then you sort of give me a lot of freedom to decide how I w- would like to approach it but i know you then maybe maybe if i say a certain technique then you're a bit more excited than for another <laughs> I think I'm pretty excited about all of them um because they're always different every time like every time we I think um all of the the printers at the workshop can attest to this that every time we do a project it always feels new it always feels fresh even if we've worked with an artist for 5 years 10 years what whenever they come in it always feels like something new and exciting so um and it's precisely because because you don't you don't know what's going to happen you don't always know what the outcome is going to be um you don't always know how that line's going to print or how that weird color that you mixed is going to print so it always it, it's it's as sometimes it's it's as much of a surprise to us as it is to you which is which is actually really fun <laughs> because it's it's um it's it's you get to play you get to like um it's just it's just different each time so i don't feel like i um i particularly enjoy one one thing more than the other um i really do love um all intaglio intaglio processes so um dry point etching um those sorts of things i'm not um uh i'm not as i feel like i'm not as good with with lino and like relief work where where you're carving and that sort of thing um but i but i enjoy it equally because it, it's a you get to learn we're always learning even in the workshop like um artists are always apprehensive when they come in because they think like we get to see all their mistakes but you equally get to see our mistakes and our kind of shortcomings and it's a it's a learning it's a learning experience for us as well so it it works both ways but that's what makes it really fun is because we're like we're both in it together like artist and technician although we've we've got it together a little bit 
more <laughs> before you come in. We kind of um we make sure that we're prepared before before the artist comes in so that we we've got it together for when you're there. But it's 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 also play for us. So I enjoy I enjoy all the processes. And I especially enjoyed my time with you, Heidi. Oh, no, I was enjoying I think the key is also collaboration. I mean, a collaboration can never really be too planned out in advance. Otherwise, you lose mm -hmm. you lose opportunities to follow those things that come up um, and present as opportunities. If it's too if it's too tightly uh, focused or too tightly planned, you might miss those things, like the happy mm, accidents. You exactly. Know. Exactly. The problem yeah. instead of a in, instead of an opportunity to pursue something further, um, and mm. also experimentation. You know, it's 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 naturally an experimental. So shortcomings are not really shortcomings they're just um no, they're exactly. just experimental process part of the process some, some don't and um yeah. it, exactly it's it's there's very much a, a, a degree of trusting the process and trusting each other you know trusting uh trusting that the environment will produce and, and that i'm not to, i mean when i say environment i mean the actual environment but i also mean the environment of collaboration mm. the different things different people bring to that and and the amount of freedom that the artist has and the amount of skill that the technician has to 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 move that along in a way that that makes sense for the artist is um is really yeah that's that's cool yeah, it's very improvise improvise there's a lot of improvising um it's very improvisational um mm -hmm. each with each step each with each um sort of test sprint that we do we sort of all get together and, and see what we're going to do um, from there. So we take it one step at a time. It's not, yeah, as you said, it, it's, it's not completely planned out mm. at the start. We sort of problem solve as we go. So it's very, um, it's very alive process. It sort of um, evolves with each step. And um, with each step, we, we sort of, um, we improvise and, <laughs> And that's how it grows. You know, it's it's very um, organic, and um, I, I sort of it feels it sort of gives me that same satisfaction that film photography gives me, where you wait for the you wait for the result, and you sort of have an idea what it's going to look like. And there's that anticipation. There's that constant anticipation. You you it's not like a painting where you see what what it looks like in the where where it's at in the um, process. Um, you know, it stays hidden, and then it reveals itself, and then, and then we, um, and then we problem solve, and they suggest, you know, um, I would say, you know, I would like it to be darker there, or I would like, um, you know, sort of, I, I would like maybe the focus to be more there, or, and then they sort of, you know, give suggestions of, um, offer suggestions of how we could achieve that through which. Um, Know which kind of technique would be good for the next step so um yeah it's, I, I enjoy the organicness of the process like that well we're getting quite close to seven o'clock so i just wanted to ask if there's anything is there anything else that either of you want to want to say or um share before we sort of wrap up I would like to say, Heidi, <laughs> um, that I really, really enjoyed um, working with you in the workshop. Um, this, although I've been at the workshop for for a long time, this was kind of my first, I would say, my first major collaboration where uh, I got to take the lead on a project. And Heidi was incredibly um, kind and patient and um excited you know about the about the project and and working with the team and so you made the you made the whole the whole process really something wonderful and i really really enjoyed working with you and it's and it's such it's such beautiful work that you made the series is so beautiful and every time i see it i just i shed a little tear because it's so great <laughs> And well yeah, done. It's, a, it's an ongoing process. It's to be continued, hopefully. Yes, and um, yeah, it's, I really enjoy the, the working environment at David Tripp Projects. They allow me um, so much freedom. And it's it's um, sometimes I can't believe how much trust that they have <laughs> in me. And um, 
and they it's yeah it's very relaxed and very um you know there's it's not that much expectations of of end results it's very much they're very, very much involved in the process and in the growth and not necessarily just the the end results and the product it's very much about you know the whole experience and the whole um and what you learn in the process as well it's not necessarily just the the end results that that is um considered and um and yeah they they give me a plate and say you know I can you can do with this you can decide you know <laughs> which is which is um amazing and such a a privilege and they um you know they're very accommodating and they make things you know they they do they make me feel at home and <laughs> make me tea and you know make sure that I have a the environment is is relaxed and yeah it's always a positive and uplifting experience yeah and um yeah they've yeah they've really been accommodating and and trusting <laughs> Well, I mean that's that's the whole thing I guess is that when when things get published they there is naturally there is an there is an initial investment in the value of your work as the artist a, a publisher that's how it works that's that's one of the beauties of it you know just like an exhibition requires requires that um that strength of conviction in your capacity to in a positive way influence the culture in which you are functioning prince prince perform that function as well mm -hmm. from a publishing perspective um which is quite a nice it's a really yeah collaboration is key um but it's also about really mm -hmm. believing it's it's about the organization and the publisher believing in your work um you know believing that you you know that there's there are legs there are legs to this work which which is true mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm excited to see the catalog. I haven't seen it in the flesh, and um, it looks beautiful from what I've seen. Mm. And um, the, the it's been hand bound by Elise De Beer and designed by Ame. Um, and it is yeah, it's 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 the first time that my work has been published in this way, and um, uh, I'm excited to see it on Saturday and. <laughs> Uh, Me yeah. too. Hopefully. I feel very proud to have been able to write for this as well. It was such a pleasure. It was the the work. I just the work really resonated with me, um, so oh, so so well that um, I'm. I feel really. Yeah, I'm also really excited to see the book. It's it's. It looks like a really beautiful, a mm -hmm. beautiful, um, a publication. So that's that's going to be fun. So just to remind everybody who is watching, um, that uh, book launch is happening um, on Saturday, 10th of April from 10 a.m. Um, at uh, David Crook Projects, where where Heidi's show is still currently up, which is that's 142 Jan Smuts Avenue in Parkwood. So hopefully we will see everybody there. Um, yeah, and as I said earlier, the show is itself is if you can't make it on Saturday, the show is also up for another week after that. So do yourself a favor and go and see it. It's really quite remarkable. Um, Thank you. Cool. Yeah, and I encourage you to go and read the, the piece that Jacqueline wrote uh, on the David Crutz portal, which is yes, um, a great perspective on the show. Cool. Thank you. Yes, it, it is there too. It was a yeah, it's, it was fun to write. <laughs> cool. So if that's, thank you for the um, if that's all, I've thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, Heidi. It's been Thanks a real privilege to moderate, to facilitate. Um, you both are really so remarkably talented at what you do. It's a privilege to have access to, to your work and your minds and your thoughts. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thank you for Thanks. the conversation. Yeah, thank you for the chat. Thanks for the moderation. Cool. <laughs> anytime. <laughs> Truly, anytime. <laughs> cool, guys. All right, and thank you to everybody else for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed it as much as we did. And that's cool. it. Thanks for allowing the opportunity and see you on Saturday. Yeah. Cool. See you all on Saturday. See you on Saturday. All okay, the viewers as well. You. See you all on Saturday. <laughs> yes, them too. <laughs> okay, cool, guys. guys. Have a good evening. You too. Thanks, Jacqueline. Thanks, Heidi. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye.